Welcome back inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. Chris, that was a long day, day number three, the final day of the 2015 NFL Draft. And I think a lot of people inside this building, Patriots people, will say it's very worthwhile because they got a lot accomplished starting off with their first pick, Flowers out of Arkansas. Trey Flowers. I think that he was one of those guys who and you hear more and more as the day goes on, talk to people around the league. He's a guy who might have been uh, a bit of an undiscovered gem, you know, being able to pick up a guy like that in the fourth round, talking to a lot of folks who say that he brings a lot of different skills to the field, making an Inkovich comparison, a guy that can rush the passer as well as drop into coverage. Just one of several defensive players that they picked up in this draft that could do a whole lot of different things. Then they went back to back to fill a need that I think a lot of people were clamoring for on the outside. A lot of fans and so-called experts said that they really needed to address the offensive line. Their next two picks, they took two different types of offensive linemen, one from Florida State, and then they also took one from Georgia Tech. Break that down. I think the Georgia Tech guy, Shaq Mason, a little bit more raw when you're talking about his ability to transition to the next level. Bill talked about it a little while ago that he did make tremendous adjustments over the course of the week at the Senior Bowl when it came to moving from more of a run-oriented game at Georgia Tech. He was a cut blocker. He was more of an interior guy, kind of a guy who, who was more interested in run blocking than pass blocking. They didn't throw the ball a whole lot at Georgia Tech. Trey Jackson is more of an NFL-ready prospect, at least as it stands right now. But they got another two guys along that interior. We talked about this last night. 16th consecutive draft for Bill Belichick where he did right. not draft an interior offensive lineman. Got two this time around on day three of the draft. At least one of them, I think both of them really, but at least one of them right now, uh, Trey Jackson, to my mind, is going to present a serious challenge to the veteran guards that are on the team. So it's going to be interesting to see the level of competition you're going to see at the, both those guard spots going forward. The biggest storyline, naturally, with Trey Jackson is he's reunited with the Patriots rookie, or started in his rookie year, uh, Brian Stork. Really one of the linchpins of the turnaround of the Patriots season was stabilizing that offensive line. And now Trey Jackson gets reunited uh, with Brian Stork. They both start on that national championship team with the mm -hmm. Florida State Seminoles and Jameis Winston. Now they're reunited. What kind of dynamic does that present? I think that there are some advantages there. I, I think you have to be cautious because they're transitioning to the next level. In this case, it's Trey Jackson making the move from college to the pros, and so you have to take that into account. But consistency and continuity are two things that cannot be underrated when you're talking about offensive line play. These are two guys who know each other. These are two guys who played alongside each other for an extended stretch as collegians. You figure that's only going to help going forward. All right. The uh, next pick uh, was, as you had mentioned to me uh, throughout the day, or actually earlier in the week you wrote about this, uh, was perhaps the most Bill Belichickian uh, <laughs> pick of the, of the uh, Belichick era, uh, a long snapper out of the Naval Academy in Joe Cardona. There's a lot to consider when considering whether or not he makes this team and why the Patriots selected him. There are a lot of different things that are coming to play when you're talking moving about... Moving parts. Exactly. There are a lot of different moving parts when you're talking about a guy like Joe Cardona and what he might be able to bring to the 2015 roster for a couple of different reasons, not the least of which he has a Navy commitment, at least as it stands right now, a five-year commitment. He's scheduled to be commissioned in May and then he enters into the Navy, you know, for, for lack of a better term, because, you know, that's what the lead-up is. And so you would think that that Navy commitment would maybe, I don't, I don't want to say, what's, what's, what's the phrase I'm looking for provide here? Provide some uncertainty. Really, it, it, would, it would provide some real uncertainty for him as it relates to, you know, his, his future plans. Bill talked about it today, you know, we'll see, we don't know what's going on. We talked to him on the conference call. He said, right now all I know is I have a commitment and I have to honor that. I just want to be the best football player I can be. I want to be the best best naval officer I can be. Right. So his, his position is a little bit uncertain, at least right now, as it is released in 2015. One thing that I th found interesting that he told us on that conference call earlier today was the fact that he has actually indicated some interest to the Naval Academy um, at, in terms of uh, an interest in at least teaching at mm -hmm. the Naval High School Academy, the pre preparatory school mm -hmm. um, in Newport, Rhode Island, with an eye, obviously, on trying to stay close by, stay at least close to the campus here at Gillette. Yeah, and there's, there, there are a couple of different options to him at this point. And I know Rick Gossman from the Dallas Morning News wrote a really good piece uh, that I tweeted out earlier in the day that examines some of the possibilities that could come into play for Cardona as it relates to his NFL career. So there's some uncertainty there, 
But, you know, frankly, from a bottom line perspective, this is, a, this is the best Bill Belichick pick of all time. He's a long snapper, you know, from Eastern Maryland, went to Navy. You know, Belichick's got the naval connections. This is maybe the least surprising pick out of the entire 2015 draft for New England. On Derby Day, Kentucky Derby Day, they take a derby. And a really fascinating story, and I know you asked Bill about this and got a great response. Uh, A.J. Derby, uh, he is a... Uh, tight end, and his father played for Belichick back in the early 90s, albeit, as we found out from Belichick himself <laughs> after you asked him, for not a very long time. Yeah. What is the story there? I, I think that Derby is a really intriguing guy because he has a background in, in a lot of different positions. You know, he played quarterback for a year, uh, for the better part of the year. He played tight end last year. Uh, for, for Arkansas, and he put up some pretty good numbers mm -hmm. there. He also played some linebacker. He's bounced around from Iowa to Coffeyville Community College down south. So he's a guy that brings a lot to the table. He's a second-generation guy, and I know Bill has an affinity for some of those second-generation guys, Matthew Slater, Andre Carter, just a couple of those guys that we've seen come through here who've had fathers who played at the NFL level. A.J. Derby's father, John, played at the NFL level, played for Bill uh, in Cleveland for uh, literally a cup of coffee. Bill talked about it today and kind of got a big smile. He said, you know, he wasn't really around all that long. So I think that that's another guy who might be versatile, who might be able to do a few different things. He's probably, at least right now, stands to be a backup tight end, but I wouldn't be surprised if he becomes maybe a gadget guy at the NFL level. But again, another second generation NFL guy for that locker room. They took another player from Alabama uh, to wrap things up. Uh, Dixon, Xavier Dixon uh, out of Alabama. He did play with Dante Hightower. What do you think about him as the potential of yet another edge rusher? A situational pass rusher. I think from what we saw from him over the course of his college career, he certainly projects to be an edge rusher at this point uh, in his NFL career. I, I don't know, you know how he would transition in any other way. Right now, probably a 10 to 15 snap a game guy. I think he's going to be thrown into the mix with some of those other guys, the Zach Moores, the Michael Buchanan's, to see you know who, who might present you know the, the, the best possible package going forward. The other guy to remember in there, uh, Dell Roberts, a cornerback out of Marshall, the only right. quarterback they took in this draft. Uh, we talk a lot about the Patriots and their affinity for the three-cone drill. Roberts did not get invited to the combine, but put up phenomenal three-cone numbers at his pro day at Marshall. So he's going to be part of the mix as well, most likely a special team. Had a chance to ask Bill at the end of the uh, press conference to wrap things up here on Saturday, the uh, final day. Where did we go from here? Where, what do these 11 rookies have to do now? And his answer was very telling and very simple and kind of a neat insight, I thought, uh, into what he's going to tell them. And that is, you're not independent contractors anymore. You've got to all get on board. And you were 11 people without a nation, he said. Uh, now you are a part of Patriots Nation. Mm -hmm. What does all of that mean to you, Chris? What kind of message is Belichick sending without these guys even in the building yet? You got to get on board. You know, you're 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 entering a new phase of your of your life. You're entering a professional phase of your life. And we've heard guys who are rookies here talk about it extensively over the course of the last few years, where. You don't have to worry about class anymore. You don't have to worry about going to school. You don't have to worry about this. You have a job at this point. You have to be a professional. You have to be accountable. That's not to suggest that you weren't accountable at the college level, but this is very, very different. I thought it was the perfect quote to essentially wrap up this stage of the team building process that all of these guys now have to transition to the next level. They have to take certain steps. They need to be accountable as professionals when they enter the NFL. And there is no indication that, hey, you're joining the Super Bowl champions. Congratulations. This is a job, and the train doesn't stop moving. Regular season, uh, division champion, Super Bowl champion, or a four and twelve team—it doesn't matter. This is a job. Yeah, exactly. And, and again, like I said, you know, this is this is a different part of their lives right now, and they need to get used to it awful quick. Bill said, you know, we're, we're going to start with them on Thursday, and we're going to see who can play and who can't play, and we're going to weed out the weak, and you know, and the strong are going to survive, and the rest are going to be left by the side of the road. So, this is. Big boy football, for lack of a better term. You know, this is real life, this is professional football, and they need to start conducting themselves accordingly. All right, wrapping up, and in conclusion, the Patriots take seven defensive players, they take three offensive players, two along the offensive line and the tight end, and they take a uh, special te uh, teamer. And uh, that is the breakdown for the 2015 Patriot draft. They take 11 players. That leaves them with four spots to fill, perhaps a Devin Gardner type, it's been rumored, will be signed as an undrafted free agent. Uh, Belichick said that that, would, uh, that news would come from uh, Patriots uh, Director of Personnel, uh, Nick Serio, over the next couple days, so we'll uh, obviously keep an eye on that. For all breaking news around the NFL and with regard to your defending Super Bowl champions, be sure to visit weei.com. 
For Christopher Price, I'm Mike Petralia, inside Gillette Stadium, weei.com.